What's up, guys? So today on the podcast, Eugene and I are going to talk to you guys about um, getting a little bit older and training jiu-jitsu. So it's something that we're all going to have to come to grips with at some point. Mm-hmm. I've been training since uh, in wrestling when I started when I was, I guess, what was it? 15 16 and then started doing jiu-jitsu when i was 18 years old and then obviously eugene's been doing it for a long time as well and so when you've trained jiu-jitsu for a long period of time from your younger days into your older days you have a bit of contrast and you have some ideas there and this podcast we're going to talk about some strategies where as you get older there will be some ideas to consider um, some strategies to consider and some different things that you can look for in your body and how to work around injuries and just getting older Now, on the same side of that, or the flip side of that, if you're younger and you're listening to this podcast, and when I say younger, I'm saying like sub 30, like when you're younger than 30, or even younger than that, right? You should listen to this podcast and understand that if you can take the lessons of an older person and implement them now, you will be in a much better situation, I promise you. It's kind of like when I was younger, I listened to a lot of mentors that I had. Uh, as a young kid, right? Uh, As a young guy, young uh, teenager, young 20 year old uh, guy. And one of the things that I noticed from a lot of my mentors was their aversion to being in debt. Many of them had been in debt at some point and they hated being in debt afterwards. And so like, they were like, you know, don't, don't ring up tons of credit card bills and stuff when you're young, don't do this. And um, that really served me well because being out of debt for the most part of my life, I was able to be very mobile and take chances to do things that I would have not been able to do otherwise. And I learned that lesson when I was young from listening to people with a little bit more experience. And so even if you're a little bit younger and you're not older yet, and by older, I just mean like you're getting into your mid thirties or close to forties. That's not necessarily old by living standards, but that is getting old when we talk about athletic and performance standards. If that is the case, still listen to the tips but it's because they can be useful to you. And if you can harness them now, you will probably have longer longevity in the sport. You'll be able to train longer and you'll probably have increased performance and wins because you'll be essentially implementing things that you're going to have to implement at some point anyway, just doing it sooner. Mm-hmm. And so that'll be the, uh, the start of the podcast. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Hope you get some ideas from it. Big thanks to our sponsor. Uh, Charlotte's Web is one of our main sponsors. Uh, for a lot of you guys, just a heads up, a lot of you guys um, have e- messaged me or emailed me saying that you were trying to put in our old code to try to get some CBD and you're like, man, it's not working. Um, they were changing some stuff around with their website and that's been finished. We have a new promo code. So it used to be 15% off, now it's 20. So if you go to charlottesweb.com and you get on there and you find some CBD products that you'd like to try or use, whether that's the tinctures, um, you can use them you know, like, like I do before sleep, or you can use one of the rubs or the balms that you can use after you know some training to kind of help reduce inflammation, things like that. Whatever it is you decide to get, use the promo code jujitsu 20 to get 20% off the order. And that'll be the new code uh, that you can use in the future. And again, you can get any of their products, uh, for just not the bundles, but any of the singular products, those will be uh, applicable to the discount by going to charlottesweb.com and again, using the promo code jujitsu20. Also, thanks to our sponsor, uh, Matt Epic Roll. Epic Roll is the company that I had the rash guards and the shorts, uh, the custom ones put together. Uh, by the way, if you guys did not receive your email and you ordered, the custom jujitsu rash guards and shorts from Epic Roll. Those um, should be shipping out at the time of recording. This will be shipping out. So if you're listening to this, they should be on their way to you. Um, they d- were just getting finished up made. Took probably like a week longer than what was expected. But again, that's not too bad considering we're still kind of dealing with all the different issues with you know supply chain stuff, which is still going on to this day. And things take a little bit longer than they used to. Uh, but those will be shipped out. And we'll be doing another batch of special custom gear somewhere in the future. We'll get, if you listen to the podcast or if you're on my, on my email list, you'll get updates on that. Um, but in the meantime, if you're looking for some jujitsu gear, whether it be uh, shorts, rash guards, geese, mer- uh, different things like t-shirts and things like that, if you're looking for anything jujitsu related, go to this website at epicrollbjj.com. I'm a big fan of the designs there. I really like them. I think they're simple. They're clean looking. Um, they're not over the top by any stretch. And again, that's one of the reasons why I paired up with Matt because I like the quality of his stuff and I like the designs of them. So you can check that out at epicrollbjj.com and use the promo code jujitsu to get 15% off the order um, by doing that when you go to their website. And also thanks to our uh, sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped is the premier men's below the belt grooming products, but I also like it for pretty much anything. My beard, 
and everything else, their colognes, their balms, their uh, shaving creams, the whole thing, everything from them that I've used has been high quality and has been top notch. Um, I got a message. I was doing my little Instagram thing on Fridays. Um, I do that like once a month now. And uh, on Fridays, I just answer questions. And someone was asking me about um, what I use to trim my beard or you know that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I use the trimmer. So they've got a trimmer called the lawnmower. The lawnmower originally was build is just a you know trimmer for your for your balls that's what it was it's like the down there it's like basically that's what it was and uh you know but it's a, it's a really good trimmer it's so you can use it for pretty much anywhere and it's um it's what's the word it's rechargeable what's that word it's it's portable it's not it's 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 cordless there we go i was trying to think of the word <laughs> having trouble with it. I was, I was too focused on balls. Um, it's a cordless trimmer. <laughs> it's waterproof. Um, and so it's really handy. And again, that's the, the trimmer that I use for pretty much everything. It replaced my old trimmer, um, that I used to have, which was on a cord. And, um, also I, I used to the old trimmer. A lot of times it would get caught and stuff and like would pull. And so this one is a little bit nicer. Um, but again, check out the, some of their stuff. Again, I'm a big fan of all their products that they sent to us so far. Uh, everything's been like really good. The quality has been really good. I like the smells of everything. So whether or not you're looking for some men's grooming products for yourself or for a man in your life, check them out at manscaped.com. The promo code is jujitsu20. You'll save 20% on the order and you get free shipping on whatever you buy from them. All right, guys. And if you would like to receive a free jujitsu package of, or free gift package rather, of some different eBooks and uh, videos that I've put together over the years, you can get that by going to jujitsu.net slash join. And when you join, you'll get access to um, several different eBooks that I've written uh, for jujitsu. One is a game plan guide. One is a drilling uh, guide. And one is an at-home study and training guide. And I wrote that at the beginning of the, the quarantine and lockdown. You can still use it for that. Or you can also use it if you're, for some reason, just not able to get into the gym for a prolonged period of time. Or if you're injured for some reason. And there's also a video on implementing some of the drilling strategies. And you can get all that by joining my email list, the True Crew email list, by going to jujitsu.net slash join, J-O-I-N. When you join up, you'll begin getting emails from me. I typically send them once a day, Monday through Friday, sometimes on the weekend. And then you'll get access to those free resources I spoke about uh, as part of the gift package. From from there, if you guys like the emails, you stay emailed with me. A lot of times you'll start to see sort of different ideas I'm working with or different things. You'll also get sort of the heads up about anything that's coming out. Anytime I make a new product, anytime I uh, start, start an event, the email list gets a heads up first before anybody else does. And if it's something that's limited, like sometimes the camps at my house or different products that we sell, if it's a limited thing, the email list, they get it first. They get first grabs. And so if you join that, you'll get first dibs on everything that I do. And then for some reason, should you not like my emails, if you're like, I don't want to listen to this stuff anymore, I don't want to read it, you can always unsubscribe. And again, you can keep the resources that you had. Uh, they're yours to keep. And so you can check that out. Also, guys, if you would like to support the podcast directly, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast, along with a backlog of tons of content over the years that we've put together. Uh, we also do a green room there once a month we're going to be doing our next one do, 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 coming up let's see probably the dates that we record change sometimes so but it'll be the week of the uh like the week of the 14th to the 18th so uh, valentine's day week we'll be doing a green room then and the green room is basically just a chance for you to speak to eugene and i directly so if you enjoy the podcast and you've ever wanted to talk to us uh, directly, it'll be kind of a low key thing that we do before the podcast. And we'll just basically chat with you about some stuff. We'll be me and Eugene already talked about all kinds of crazy stuff before the podcast. So, I mean, that's just, that's a, that's a normal, right? So you can just be like that. You can just like, Hey, if you want to join in with us for a conversation and shoot the shit, that's what it is. It's and like so, our warm up exercises almost. It's like well, vocal exercises. Well, I think it's just, we're buddies, right? And so yeah. we, when we get to see each other for like, we get to, we literally turn off our phones and everything and we're yeah. just sitting or chatting with each other for a few hours. And so that's kind of when we're just kind of catching up with stuff. Yeah. And so if you guys would like to join in on that conversation, you can join us uh, by joining the Patreon and you can get access to the green room. And again, along with that, you will get access to a backlog of tons of content. So stuff from the podcast, stuff from videos that have never been released, tons of different uh, things, even like sh stuff, stretching and stuff that we've done in the gym, just tons of different items like that, that you get access to by joining the Patreon. It's super inexpensive, supports the podcast and you get a lot for it. So check it out at patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. And uh, guys, with all that said, let's jump into the podcast and talk about how to train jujitsu as you're getting a little bit older in life. Yeah. 
Yeah. So getting, uh, as we've aged, you said yeah. you're uh, getting closer, getting to, closer to 40. Yeah. I mean, I'm 37 now, so I'm three years away. I mean, yeah. I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm closer to 40 at this point than I am 30. And you know, you just feel things. I remember all the old uh, guys back in the day when I was younger saying, Hey, listen, you know, when you get to 30, when you get to 35, when you get to these certain ages, you really do start to fill your body more. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you're younger, you really don't feel it. It's I, I, I liken it to a car. Like if you've ever bought a vehicle, um, either new or relatively new, you know, like under, um, you know, relatively low miles. Yeah. You get in that car. There is like, you just drive it and you don't even really notice anything. There's no rattling. There's no nothing. And then, you know, as you drive it longer and longer, and if you're like me where I'm not necessarily the biggest car person. So like, you know, with my, my, my daily driver, I'll drive that thing to the damn wheels fall off and, you know, stuff starts to rattle, stuff starts to break on it. Like, you know, like weird stuff. Like you're like one day you'll like you'll pull on like a door handle or something and something gets stuck, you know? Um, I mean, and, and it's kind of like that with our body where it's like, you know, you don't really notice it ever. And then one day, like all of a sudden, you know, you go to like step out of your car and you twist your knee or you go to the gym and you're, you're warming up and all of a sudden your shoulder pops and you're like, what, the f what was that? Or, yeah. you know, you sleep wrong and your neck hurts the next day, you know, things that never really created problems, but it's that wear and tear. And so it's very much like that. And so I, I I'm, um, I, I'm going to do a video series probably soon about breaking down because I have to figure out what those are, but breaking down the changes as to my training habits um, from the time I was 18 to the way getting closer to 40 and kind of breaking down like kind of how it changed and like when it changed and that kind of thing, because there was definitely phases of my training. Now, I, I still really enjoy training. I train for most for compared to most people. I train a lot, um, but the training's definitely changed um towards being a little bit less intense uh so mm -hmm. to speak so yeah I, I think you take things for granted a little bit when you're a little sore or a little tight you just get in start moving start rolling and it mm -hmm. kind of works its way out and now for me it's like uh I, mean, I really have to put some time in uh to like moving around beforehand or even take the one thing that i've done is i've taken my um my first role is is now become like a warm up role. Like after mm -hmm. we've even after we've warmed up in general for class, then we've done technique and all that. My first role is usually just uh, kind of like me getting the body moving, <clears throat> and that that's been one of the things that I've adjusted. I still try to you know roll pretty hard. Like and I kind of go based on my opponent. Like if my opponent is is going hard if they're putting you know i equal out the pressure if they're going fairly mm -hmm. controlled i'm going to do the same um if there's someone of of inferior or less skill level i'm definitely not going to put i'm going to use more more skill more technique instead of like power or mm -hmm. i mean some of that comes in but like i'm going to do that more uh i'm gonna focus on that a little more but i definitely my first role is always like like a like a movement warm up i'm just kind of going through the mo motions a little bit and trying to get my body truly warm so yeah. That's when the adjustments for me. And um, I don't know. I feel like my, my, I need to supplement more. My cardio, I think, suffers a little bit more. Like, I don't have just mm -hmm. the, the cardio is just not there. Like, I have to really be consistent on the mats mm -hmm. and off the mats. If I'm off the <laughs> mats, I'm not doing as much. Like, I feel it when I train. Like, I just don't feel like my body's just like, I, I don't have enough, enough gas, I think. And, and it takes me a little bit consistency of training to, to get that back. Yeah, and I think that a lot of times when you're when you're older, you begin to lose that cardio faster. Like when you're younger, like I mean, you know, just as an example, like when you're younger, you can take a little bit of time off and you can come back. Like I remember this vividly. I could take a month off, like let's say if it was like an injury or work or whatever, and I could come back relatively out of shape for me, and I would still be able to push the push the pace a little bit. Mm -hmm. Whereas now like when I come back, I have to be very deliberate about how I come back because one, <clears throat> the cardio is not going to be there and I'm going to be, well, it's there, but it's not there in the same capacity because the pro see, the problem is, is that we we're, we're in this constant, our bodies are constantly changing, but our mind always likes to put things into static boxes. So for instance, like this is, you think about this, this is why we try to we're really bad about this with human beings. Like for instance, if like, if I know you to be Eugene and I know you to be a certain way, 
I want you to be that way all the time. I don't want you to change because in my in my mind, I have put you into this box and our bodies, our, our minds are always trying to put things into some sort of some sort of like landscape where it's easy to navigate. And if things are constantly changing, which they are anyway, it's that means that we have to constantly take information and that's exhausting. So we try to put things into little boxes and we do this. We have a, a big struggle with people like when all of a sudden someone changes where people start acting differently than they used to or they start to be a different person. And we've come to know them a certain way and we're like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa what are you doing? You're You're supposed to be this way. I mean, you look at people all the time where um, online when, when a, per, a particular person has a personality mm -hmm. and then they may share some idea or viewpoint that maybe goes against what they've said in the past or whatever. And then people flip out because they're like, you're supposed to be this person. This is how we've come to know you. And we put you in this box. Well, we do this with ourselves too, where, you know, as our bodies begin to change, which they are right, they, they are changing. We have come to know ourselves in a certain way. And then sometimes we really struggle to update the information. So for instance, let's say if you take a month off due to an injury um, or you have an illness or something like that and you come back, especially when you're older, you lose that cardio, you lose that energy a lot faster than you do when you were younger. Well, when you come back, mentally, you still feel like the same person. Nothing's really changed in you mentally, but then physically you've changed and then mm -hmm. you struggle with it. Cause then all of a sudden you're like, well, I can't go as fast as I was a month ago because I haven't been training. I've got to dial it back. And that creates some frustration. I, I experienced this even with like when I came back from uh, COVID mm -hmm. where again, I'm not saying it didn't like hurt me. I'm, I'm fine, whatever. But when I first came back, I, I just say that cause it's interesting. It's such a, uh, it's such a, like a topic that people get so upset about on both ends. Um, <laughs> like I, I had one guy told me, he's like, it doesn't, COVID doesn't even exist. I was like, okay, guy, okay, big guy doesn't exist. All right. Anyway, I, you know, I had it and I, you know, was fine for the most part and I could lift weights and I could even like go for a nice light bike ride or even mm -hmm. a jog, uh, not a jog, but a, a long walk. But I remember when I came back into training, if I tried to roll, holy moly, bro. Like it was like that kind of pace was just different. I couldn't do that. And that stuck with me for about 60 days afterwards. And it was a struggle because I'm like, I, a week ago I was able to do this, no problem. And now, or about two weeks ago, cause I had to take 14, I took, you know, 14 days off or whatever, but now I'm coming back and it hasn't been that long. And I'm already like sucking wind after the first two rolls right. and I have to roll really slow. But again, I've been through this enough where I understand, okay, well, we just got to dial it back for a while. Um, and you make room for what they, what's changing in you. But yeah, it's, 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 I think that's an issue with a lot of people where the mind and the body are in a disconnect. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's one of the beautiful things about jujitsu because it does get you to come to grips with that, that like nothing is static, everything's changing and you have to be willing to mentally like accept what the, those changes are, not just physically, not just with yourself, but in the world around you, because nothing's going to be the same. And so you have to make those adjustments and you have to be willing to accept those. So let's talk about this so for you someone that's trained for many years and and you're <coughs> very knowledgeable of your body you're knowledgeable you, you know where you stand in the jiu-jitsu you know in the gym yeah still regardless you at your at 50 percent is better than probably everybody at the gym but how did you go about you know and this may be a good question for for other people even coming back from injuries mm -hmm. um i hear this a lot i get these questions a lot that, that there's that disconnection between mind and body but what did you do as far as like accepting um, that this is kind of part of the process. Like, what did you do to possibly make the modifications? Like, man, I can't do this right now. I can't go as fast. I can't roll as many rounds in your head. What were you doing? Like problem solving wise, uh, to allow yourself to still get a benefit on training, not get down on yourself and still kind of, um, just get a positive impact from training. Well, so let me tell you what I did uh, back in the day. So uh, this is the beautiful thing about having practice <laughs> with these things is you get a chance to screw them up really bad and then learn from them. So when I was younger, my mindset was basically jump right back into it. We've got to make up for lost time because the clock yeah. is ticking, you know, that, that, that kind of urgency, um, borderline sort of desperation that comes mm. over. Now, when I did this, okay, there was always a problem. Um, some of those problems have stayed with me my entire life, right? So for instance, like when I had my first meniscus tear, when I had that meniscus tear, I was literally at the top of my game at that point. I was getting ready for an MMA fight. I was in great shape, da, 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 da. And then I tore my meniscus. 
Well, when I got back from the meniscus surgery, I, I really didn't do very good with my PT. I did it half-assed. I just jumped right back in to training, competed within a month after my meniscus surgery. And my right knee um, to this day does not fully extend. And I believe that in part it's because of that, because I didn't do the PT right. I didn't do the exercises to re-engage everything properly. And yeah. I think that created a problem. Um, you know, And honestly, I struggled with that right knee surgery for a while. I remember for like, uh, I used to have trouble with it for probably a year or year, year or so after that surgery, because I never gave it the time to fully like recover after the surgery. I was quote, making up for lost time, which in turn created a lot more problems immediately and down the road. What, what uh, kind of things were you struggling with? Just, uh, it's a good, it's a good teaching moment and a good lesson for people that maybe think like they feel like they're, Oh, I can do the daily. You know, I, this is the question that I get it or, or the, like I can do what I need to do on a daily basis, you know, mm -hmm. squatting to, you know, to tie my shoes or pick something off the floor. You can do these things, but now you're adding this dynamic component with resistance mm -hmm. and all this stuff. What kind of things did you struggle with? You know, just to give people an idea on like even a fairly, you know, in a quotation mark, simple surgery, it, you mm -hmm. know, meniscus, yeah. uh, just a meniscectomy or cleaning out your right. meniscus. What kind of things did you still struggle with, even though you felt like you were ready to get back to it? You mean like when I had the surgery the first time? Well, yeah, just what kind of things when you, you said you struggled for about a year, were you struggling with like certain movements? No, uh, I, had, I had pain. Like, so basically like, so, and this will be the difference between the surgery re more, more, more recently and the one back then, back then, like I had problems with the stiffness in my knee. Mm -hmm. Um, I had problems with the, um, like just pain. Sometimes it just didn't feel good. Um, like obviously I could lift squat and all that stuff pretty okay. But when it came to jujitsu, it was really tough. And even with the squatting part, I, I, I didn't feel great with that leg for uh, some time. And I used to wear knee pads and knee braces and all that stuff. And again, I was 20 years old, mm -hmm. right? Like 20 years old doing this, pose that to 2014 when I tore my meniscus in the other leg. And then I'm older at this point coming back from it. I, was much more intelligent because I was like, you know what? I totally screwed up that last time. That was a, I did a really bad job with that last recovery. Let's do it in a, let's do it in more intelligently this time. Um, obviously I worked with you for my PT and was diligent about it. Um, I put myself on a schedule and basically was like, here's my timetable that I'm looking for all of, obviously the timetable is negotiable. It's not set in Very stone. Much. But basically, it's like four weeks, I'm going to do this. And then at six weeks, I'm going to begin to add this in eight weeks, 12 weeks. Basically, give myself a a plan to where like, here's when I get to roll again, full speed. And yeah. here's how I'm going to ramp myself back up to that pace um, and, and that kind of thing. And I stuck to it pretty well. And, you know, the difference in the legs are, is massive as far as like the, the feeling in the knee. Mm -hmm. And essentially, the same surgery was performed on both knees. Right. It was the same meniscusectomy. It was the same part of the meniscus. It was torn the same bucket handle issue. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so basically it's like, it was the same damn surgery, but performed two different ways. In one instance, I got back to training too quickly. I felt like I was needed. I needed to make up lost time, so to speak. And I didn't really look and, and this is one of the things that you start to figure out about injuries and things like that is a lot of times the injuries are telling you something about you. They're telling you something about your body and the way you're training and everything else. And you can either choose to listen or you can just go about things the way you have been doing and you you fail to gain everything you can, right? A lot of times people look at their injuries and the bad things that happen to them. I don't want to say bad, but the things that are seemingly negative and they look at them as just, oh, this sucks. But you can look at it and you can say, okay, I tore my meniscus cartilage or I did this yeah. thing. This thing happened for a particular reason. What was that reason? What can I do to improve this? And so, for instance, this is what led me down to getting more into like like improving the flexibility in my body and the mobility, um, lessening the weight, like my weight training, lessening the weight and really focusing on quality of movement and range of motion more so than just like, let's pound some weight out there and, you know, doing different things and focusing more on is intelligent training rather than just beating the shit out of my body, which in turn made me better long term. And so the first time I learned nothing from the experience and I just got back to what I was doing normally. And I was just, that was it. When any time I've gotten injured since then, whether it be, well, I don't want to say since then, probably like by, by my late twenties, by my late twenties, anytime I got injured, instead of looking at it as this sort of woe is me type of thing, I said, okay, I got injured. Why did I get injured? What can I do to, to improve this in the future? 
Um, what do I still have access to? So for instance, sometimes we all, we all get little small injuries sometimes, right? Little tweaks that aren't going to take you off the mats necessarily, or they're not going to completely derail you, but you're going to have to adjust training. And it's in these moments that sometimes we can open up new areas of our game and discover new areas or improve other areas. I mean, even going back to the COVID thing, when I came back from that, my wind was terrible. Um, I just couldn't roll at the same pace that I used to. So I spent several weeks basically being very defensive. I would roll some days and all I would do is focus on guard retention. And if a submission happened or a sweep happened, I would flow right into it. Um, I would, people would get to side control a lot on me and I would defend and basically try to expend the bare minimum amount of energies I could. So I could be as efficient as possible, which is something we want in jujitsu anyway, but I'm still, but I'm getting better at being efficient because I don't have the energy to spend. Right. And so that was a benefit to me. And so again, just like that, you know, you can think about it this way. The difference as far as the way that I treat injuries and that I treat illnesses or I treat basically being derailed from training then and now is just being honest with the situation. My body's changed now. I've got injured. I'm not going to be the same person anymore. What do I need to do to make things work in the future? What can I do to improve things in the future? And just sort of being aware of that. Mm -hmm. and, and awareness in itself is transformative because if you're if you just simply acknowledge it like you are now injured you now have a you know piece of your body that's been removed you now have a piece of your body that's been repaired it's never going to be the same as it was what are you going to do to work around that are you going to simply ignore it and act like it never happened or are you going to say listen you know here is my here is my thing i now have to work with this and I think that's the thing is people, again, wanting to put themselves into a static box. I'm this person. You have to make room for who you're becoming. And if you're becoming someone that has an injury, it would be stupid not to acknowledge that. Um, and so I think that's the big change as far as the injuries go is I just, I'm much better at just saying this is the way that it is and just go along with it and rather than trying to resist it necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and as you're like, we talked <laughs> about getting older you know, think about recovery and um, recovering from injuries and also just recovering from a tough training session. You know, I, mm -hmm. we talked about kind of getting, getting back to the kind of how we roll as we're older, you know, how we get oh, and yeah. you even see some of this. Uh, it just kind of came into my head like Bernardo uh, has that uh, DVD that just came out or the or the instructional about like rolling or training for old guys yep. or yep, old yep, guy yep. techniques, which is interesting. Right. Like that's uh, uh, and, and I think it's based more on now slowing the game down um mm -hmm. controlling like i i the way i train or the way i try to even if my cardio is is not as good as i want it is i i uh i try to focus on bursts i try to focus on mm -hmm. moments and mm -hmm. timing uh, more than like just meeting somebody's aggression with aggression i kind of try to control them and slow them down or wait for an opportunity and be more um more timely about my approach you know sure. when i'm gonna attack or when i'm gonna make for the movement so did you feel like you needed to do that as well? Did you focus on that part of your game? You know, especially like thinking about, um, you know, coming back from COVID and not having the wind that you, that you had, or even just in general being older and the, you know, having some, some little issues like injuries or, or just even somebody has better cardio than you, you know, how, how are you kind of focusing on overcoming that? Well, you know, cardio is fine now, of course. Um, but is it, it just, as good it, as when you were in your twenties? Oh, of course not. Um, but it, you know, my cardio is not as good as I was in my twenties. But if I was to face myself in my twenties, I'd kick my ass because I'm more technical and I know how to play the game. So here's the thing about jujitsu. One of the things that we're all after, right, is this. I don't want to say technical because I think people really they really butcher that word. Okay. Like for for instance, if someone uses some sort of physical attribute like strength or um, speed or something like that, they go, "Oh, dude, be more technical." You know, to me, like, what the shit does that mean? Technical, right? Like, I mean, to do a technique by itself requires you to do a movement pattern, which in turn requires muscle. And we all know that when you're training, you are going to use muscle, you're going to use energy, you're going to use flexibility, speed, whatever God's gave you, right? You're going to use that. Right. So I, I, so you can use it in the sense of being technical with that thing. You can use strength in regard with technique. You can use speed with the technique. But to say technical, what I think most of us are after is not necessarily just the technical stuff, right? But efficiency, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, I think it, the perfect jiu-jitsu match or the perfect jiu-jitsu role is the one where you absolutely dominate someone and you don't break a sweat. 
You know, that's kind of like you're efficient. You're efficient. You're you, you have complete economy of movement. You're only moving when you need to move. You're precise. I mean, that's really what you're after. Um, you know, no wasted movements, no wasted anything. That's kind of what you want. And it's one of these things where you learn all these valuable lessons as you get older because you're forced to. Yes. You wish you could have learned these things sooner when you're younger, but you couldn't um, until obviously <laughs> you end up getting smacked in the face by them. Some, some people do learn them younger uh, than some. I'm not one of those people. And so the as you get older, you're forced to slow things down a little bit and you're forced to try to develop that economy at times. And that's one of the things that as you get older, you become more focused on because you won't have the energy uh, or the aggression sometimes to match the young people that come into the gym. And so you then have to switch gears and say, okay, I need to focus on my economy, my efficiency. Like when I roll with, uh, like I have, I still have very good cardio. I can still move very well, especially for my age. But when, and again, I'm not old. Like I, I'm just saying this because I know we do have some people that are older than me that listen to the podcast. I'm not saying I'm old by no means, but again, I've been, I've been grappling for 20 years I'm 36, almost 37. I know what it was like to be 16 years old, 20 years old, 25 years old, 30, 35. I know what it like to be at these different ages. And I know that when I was younger, I was like full of piss and vinegar and I could just go. I, yeah. I could just, it didn't matter. I could just push myself, push myself, push myself. I don't have that ability now. And if I try to, I end up wrecking myself for multiple days afterwards because I'm so exhausted. <laughs> and so but with that, like, like when I roll, with, say like Brandon, Brandon's that, you know, the, the young guy, the college wrestler for those of you guys listening. And, uh, you know, he's in the gym and he's getting, you know, he's getting tough. When I roll with him, if I try to match his speed, like I'm going to wear myself out. So I have to be efficient. I have to wait for the right time. Yeah. I have to be precise with my movements because if not, I'm going to exhaust myself. And, um, you know, but I think that's a, that's a tip that if you learn that younger, it's even, it, it's really good. Like one of the guys at the gym, uh, Evan, um, He's a military guy. You train with him in the mornings yeah. and stuff like that. And one of the things I was, I was rolling with him yesterday. One of the things I told him is like, bro, you've got to slow down. He doesn't, cause his thing is he's, he's like a, for you guys listening, he like was really into CrossFit. I mean, the dude's in phenomenal shape. He has a cr great engine on him. Um, and he's got some really good sweeps and he can push the pace. And on a lot of people, he can beat some upper belts just oh, yeah. by put, by pushing the pace on them. Right. And they, they have trouble dealing with it. With me though, it's not going to happen because I'm again. I can he does, he can push the pace on me, but I'm going to be at a technical advantage, and he's going to end up wasting a lot of energy. And so yesterday we were rolling, and he never allowed himself to slow down or stop. He was constantly going, and you know he's starting to suck wind. You know, at one point he actually tapped out because I was like just putting pressure on him, and he had expended so much energy that he just couldn't get a breath. And so you know I was telling him that like again the 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 tempo of jujitsu is typically in a good situation for you is slow, fast, stop, slow to set up, right? You're setting up your movements, you're moving around, you're getting your grips, whatever it is. You're not going very fast, but you're, you're, you're setting something up. You go fast for a moment. And that's the, that's when you use that energy, that, that scramble, that precise placement of energy. You go after your movement, your guard pass, your takedown, your sweep, whatever it might be. You fight through the scramble, you establish position or whatever it might be, or maybe they establish position on you, and then you stop for a moment. And that's where you establish position. You take your breath and, whew, all right, what am I going to move to next? And then you slowly start your next setup and advancing, and then you go fast. You know, it's this, this pattern. And so you want to develop that as early as possible. But when you're older, you're just forced to learn it because you don't have a choice. If you try to go fast, 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 I mean, eventually you're just going to run into a wall and you're not going to have any energy. I, I think when you're older and you're experienced, it's really an easier lesson to learn. If you're someone that's older at starting jujitsu. Oh yeah. You're going to go, you're going to go crazy. And, and Evan, I was telling Evan the other day, um, after morning class, cause Evan kind of started really coming to these morning classes and I could see his development. <laughs> he was tough from the beginning. I mean, he just had that, you know, just had that motor on him mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just, uh, he is hard to handle. And like, I, I think that if I didn't know Evan, like if I hadn't learned, like if we hadn't learned each other's games early mm -hmm. on, like he would give me a much harder time, mm -hmm. much harder time. But like, I think that he's, uh, he's just gotten so, so, so much better. And, mm -hmm. and he's always very, uh, very good, um, very good listener. And like, you know, he kind of takes the advice you give him and he kind of uses it and which, which I, which I like, but yeah, he's one of those guys where you have to definitely, he's young. 
you know, he's got, he's in great shape and he's going to put it on you and you have to be able to, uh, as myself, you know, being 38, almost 39, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I have to like conserve. And then, like you said, it's almost like, um, I think of a roller coaster, you know, roller coaster goes up, up, up nice and slow. And then you get kind of fast and then comes back up, you know, you kind of use that, uh, use that kind of momentum or, or that kind of like that build up to get in the position you want, really attack, and then kind of slow it down, control, and then build to the next thing. You kind mm -hmm. of almost like these little waves or these like uh, little ebbs and flows. And I think that uh, as a, uh, it's almost like picking your shots. Like when you're, you know, if you're a boxer or somebody like that, you know, you kind of pick your shots, you kind of, you know, jab, move, and position. Mm -hmm. Then when you're ready, boom, you know, you, you find the opening. And that's kind of what you're doing in, in, in grappling. You're finding that opening. And when you're, when you're older and you don't have as much of that power bar, you know, you don't have as much of that energy bar there. Like you have to pick and be, be wiser about your shots and what you're going to, where you go for. Well, and you should be anyway. I mean, it, it, you should do this younger. I mean, if you can do yes. this younger, it's it's all the better because again, there's, uh, what's the goal of jiu-jitsu? Efficiency. We want to be efficient and you don't want to unnecessarily expend energy just because you got it. I mean, because again, right. that's still going to have downsides. Imagine you're at a competition and you dump your wad in the first match and then you've still got four more to go. Well, now, man, you're going to be in a bad spot. So you want to go out there and be efficient and place everything really well. Um, you know, just sort of another sport analogy, you can consider it to like basketball, right? Like basketball, let's say the, the team, you know, they're taking the ball down the court, um, to try to score. They're not like, unless there's like a, a moment where they can break away and then get away from the other team, they might do that. But most of the time they, they dribble the ball down their team assembles into whatever formation they're going to do. They pass the ball around and they move the ball around and they're looking for an opening. And once yep. they see an opening or there's a play, they're going to run, they go right. Um, and that's what happens. And so instead of it being just like some constant, like they're not constantly running back and forth because if they tried to do that, they'd be done in the first quarter, right? They'd be exhausted, but they have to conserve their energy and they have to be smart with it. And they've got to place it precisely because as humans, we've only, we've only got so much mm -hmm. in each one of us. And so we have to be mindful of that energy. We can't just expend it unnecessarily. Right. Uh, otherwise we're going to be in a bad spot. I think that like when, like we talked about being older, you're forced to learn that lesson when you're younger, mm -hmm. you, you, you feel like there's ways you can compensate, right? You've got Sometimes, more yeah. gas in the tank. You got a little more strength. Uh, you're a little more, um, uh, you can take a little more bumps and bruises. You know, you can go, you, you can really put more time. You can go harder. You can, you can go harder for more rounds. And, um, but when you're older, you think, I think you you're forced to adapt. You're forced to adjust your game. Or if you try the same type of game against a younger opponent, that's got more gas in the tank that, that cardio makes, you know, what they say, like makes cowards out of, out of people or something fatigue. like fatigue, fatigue makes fatigue cowards makes, of us. Yeah. yeah. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. I think is the, is the quote. And I think that's so true because you see in any sport or competition, you know, when the fatigue comes in, it starts to, you see the, it, it, it translates mentally. Right. You start having these mental doubts like, oh, man, I'm starting to lose. I'm starting to you even see it like an MMA all the time. Like you see somebody really confident in the first round. They're just beating the crap out of somebody. And then the second round, they start to fatigue and you see that they, they start those doubts start mm -hmm. to creep in. So I think having, uh, you know, the ability to um kind of go when you have to slow down when you have to know and knowing what you're capable of and knowing that you can pull someone into your game possibly is uh is very advantageous and, and i think it, it it helps level the playing field in, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. yeah i yeah. mean and when you're younger you can you, when you're younger you can push yourself in a manner where besides the fact that you know your heart and, and things like that they can just take more they can go fat you you can you can raise your heart rate to a higher point right, exactly, else. typically exactly. you know your, your engine essentially has a uh, a higher rpm so to speak right. you know <laughs> Um, besides that, you can also push yourself in training a lot more when you're younger because of the fact that you can take the wear and tear a little bit easier. Um, when I was younger, I, mean, I could train really hard and really, really hard and I could lift really heavy and I could just come back the next day. Now, if I have a really heavy lifting day, if I train jujitsu really hard, I am not training the next day. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be beat up. And there's probably mm -hmm. gonna be more of a like a, a central nervous system tax than there used to be. Whereas, right. like for instance, like I was talking to one of my friends about this. Like, if I do like a heavy deadlift day or a heavy squat day, like heavy, where like I'm really pushing it to the point where like if if you guys are familiar with what's called the RPE, like rated perceived ex exertion, yeah. uh, that scale. 
if I'm getting close to like 10 or nine or whatever, like with a particular rep scheme, even if it's like eight reps, 10 reps, whatever, if I'm getting to the top end of that, dude, I'm wiped. And then like, mm -hmm. you know, and then if I'm going to try to train, it's not going to happen. Like I'll, I'll be terrible. Now, sometimes it can be a useful, if you have trouble with this, like this idea of being efficient and not using your energy, it could be a worthwhile exercise, like burn yourself up it's with some exercise and then go try to train and you're going to force yourself to be efficient because you don't have a choice. <laughs> you won't have, you won't have the energy. That can be a good thing. Um, as long as you understand that you can't, you won't be able to push yourself and don't try because you're going right. to injure yourself, but go in there with the, the mindset of like, I don't have strength today. I've got to be, you know, thoughtful and, and, and efficient. Sure. Um, but most often what happens is it, for me, like if I do that too much, it leads to this really hard physical tax. Like, so if I train really hard jujitsu and I have a heavy squat or deadlift session, like the next day, if I, or if I do it for more than one day, I mean, literally dude, it's like, I will feel, I will feel ill. I will feel sick. Like I'm getting sick. And it's not that I'm getting sick. It's literally just because my body's like tired. It's wiped out. Um, and that's not something I ever used to feel before. Um, you know, I'm like, what is going on? I remember I have a, for anybody listening, I have a journal. I have lots of different journals, but one of the journals that I keep is like a journal of like the way that I feel body wise and, and basically my activity. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So I'll basically, as I'm going through training, like for instance, if I'm trying a new diet, if I'm tr doing a new training regimen, if I'm you know testing things out, I will go through and sort of keep track of those days and how I feel on those days. And this way I can get an idea of like, how is this affecting me? Because a lot of times we forget, you know, we forget about things, things become kind of in our memory, they become a blur. And, you know, to some degree, our memories are kind of this weird, it's a perception, it's almost imaginary, because it's what we remember of it. And sometimes those memories aren't so sharp, right? We, we've all had those experiences where we swore there was a movie that said something. And then it's like, oh, it didn't say that at all. Like, I thought it did. Um, or we swear that someone was wearing this particular item and then we see a picture from it and we're like, oh, it wasn't that at all. <laughs> um, and so we can forget how we feel about things. And so I keep a journal about how I feel about my body. Whenever I'm changing up my routine, um, I don't keep it all the time. I just keep it anytime I'm changing up my routine or whatever. And, uh, you know, I, I like, like I remember just, uh, last month I, or two months ago, I was training and I noticed that like my training was, I would have these two a day sessions with jujitsu and lifting and it would be hard sessions back to back. And this was like, you know, going on. And I kept noticing that when I had too many of those in a week by Saturday, I would feel sick. Like I would feel like I would feel like I was getting ready to get sick. You know, I would feel fatigued. My mind would just be really foggy and I would be just like lethargic. Mm. And then as long as I get a good night's rest, I was fine the next day. And so I was like, well, maybe I need to be mindful of this and maybe keep those two a day sessions a little bit more sporadic and not so consistent. And, um, and so now I kind of worked them in a little bit separately, but when I was younger though, now going back to when I was younger, I could do all that stuff and no problem. I mean, I would literally train for like four hours or so in a day, right. um, because I could, and because I was trying to get as good as I could and I could, that my body could take the volume much better than it could now. So now I have to train differently. My lifting, I don't go to full exertion on most of my lifts. Um, I push it and I try to stimulate the muscles, but I don't go like full crazy, like hardcore on it. Um, and then with my jujitsu, it's very much the same. I try to push it. I try to stimulate, but I, I don't try to annihilate myself. And I think that some people, especially when you're younger, you kind of enjoy that being annihilated. You like having mm -hmm. that feeling of being dumped and being just a sweaty mess in the mat where you can <laughs> barely walk out. Right. But for longevity purposes and being able to train the next day, I just don't like to do that anymore. Yeah. What, what's, what do you think is, um, for people that are getting older as well, maybe, or have to modify their, their training or what have you, what do you think is the most important lesson you've learned so far? I mean, you're not old by any means. I'm sure but in ten, when you reach 45 or 50, you're going to have another lesson. Oh yeah, dude. I'm going to be like more. 45 or 50. I'm like, man, when I was 37, exactly. 36, it was I felt good old days. Yeah. It was all relative. It's all relative. I mean, it, you know, is, and, and now when I was like, now I'm looking back at it back when I was 25, I know. um, you know, I, I don't think that there's one lesson. I just think that a really good idea is to listen to your body. Yeah. You know, it, it's just your body tells you stuff, you know, and you have to be willing to listen. I think a lot of us, we don't, we don't really listen to our body. We just kind of 
we're so hell bent on progress. We're so hell bent on like pushing ourselves and grinding and everything else that like when our body starts making noises, right? It's like your car, you start hearing a rattle and it's, it's as if you ignore it. And then all of a sudden one day your engine blows out or your check engine light comes on or your oil light comes on. And it's like your car, your car's telling you, Hey bro, there's an oil leak. We're running out of oil. And then one day your engine ceases up because you ran out of oil. Um, your fault. You didn't, you didn't listen to the signs. Um, you should have just taken them to a mechanic and a simple little fix could have changed the whole thing, right? Well, it's the same way with your body. A lot of times we start having these like little things, these little nagging like sensations that say, hey, hey, your hip hurts today, you know, and then it comes to you like, why does it hurt? You know, I need to address this. But because most of us are lazy in the sense of being proactive, most of us are very reactive. We're, we're, yeah, we, yeah. we, pro, we procrastinate to the end. We, when we, when we feel something, we don't take advantage of it. Like we don't, we don't work on it then and now. Like for instance, if, if someone feels something, they could hire a physical therapist to look at it with them and say, why is this particular part of my body hurting? And they could give them some rehab exercises to, to address the issue right then and there before it gets worse. But instead you're like, ah, I'm fine. Just put a little put a little like rub on it or something, you know, whatever, and just grit your teeth and push through it. And then they tear their shoulder or they tear their knee or whatever. And then they're out. Mm -hmm. Right. I think one of the things that's been the most important now is like when I feel those things, like even if I'm in the middle of a session and I'm like feeling great, like great. And all of a sudden I feel a particular pinch in my knee. I'll stop. I'm like, all right, give me a second. I got to see like, this may be nothing. It may be something, but let me see. And I'll probably not roll the rest of that day because I'm like, I just don't know what that means. And I need to wait a little bit to see. And instead of trying to push it. And so I think that's probably been the biggest thing is that like, when I feel these sensations in my body, these little things, one, I'm more proactive about addressing them. Um, usually with your help, I seek you out and say, Hey, Eugene, this is hurting. Can you tell me what this yeah. is? And can we, can we try to fix this? Um, and then from there also just sometimes if i'm hurting i'll just take i'll take a break and say listen i'm i just felt a pinch and as much as i want to train right now if i train right now that could lead me to an injury and again I, i've gained this through experience you know so i've had my body like break enough en enough times on me um sometimes for like you know longer periods sometimes for very short periods it like you just get a little bit wiser to it right so understanding that okay i need to i need to just back off a little bit and give this a second to feel how everything's going to shape out and then you know we'll, we'll see what happens yeah you used to be able to um i used to be able to ignore stuff stiffness or like a little mm -hmm. tweak here now i could ignore it and then the next day usually it'd be okay right mm -hmm. ah, it's a little tweak i'm fine i can work through it um now i like you said you don't I, what one thing that i do and I, that i've started to do a lot more if i'm lifting and yeah. i've had this this issue before i had my back i've injured my back actually when i knew it just didn't my back just wasn't feeling good mm -hmm. and i kept we're trying to work through it and i've hurt myself or even yeah. the next day i've had a lot of increased stiffness or pain i modify my exercise like well how can i get a similar uh you know activation of some of these muscles how can i still challenge myself what can i do mm -hmm. how can i do a um Maybe if I can't back squat, what can I do? Maybe a split squat or like a Bulgarian, yeah. you know, something where I'm not loading my <laughs> spine directly. Um, and, and that's yeah. some things that I've done. I think is really excellent to, to think about in going to jujitsu. Well, all right. I tweaked my knee during this role. Let me sit out or let's just let me work from this position. I'm just going to do positional work or I'm just going to drill mm -hmm. or do whatever, whatever you need to do. But I think like when you're younger, you, you ignore these things because usually nine times out of 10, they, they resolve without any, any right. kind of intervention, right? right? It mm -hmm. just goes away on its own. It just magically heals. The body's you know, amazing. But, but the thing of it is, is if you have a dysfunction or something that's just not feeling right, maybe your knee hurts. Well, then you mm -hmm. start kind of favoring that knee and you start moving a little differently. And then all of a sudden your hip starts to hurt. And then mm -hmm. the, the knee is still not corrected. Now your hip is causing you, you know, so it's kind of, it can be like a domino effect in that way. So I think, like you said, w what I recommend to people honestly is like, if you tweak your knee, you know, it could be nothing. Give yourself a couple of days, move around, see if you can do some easy stuff, see how range of motion is. And if it's not getting better, if you're like, mm -hmm. if you've reached this plateau, uh, you know, and, and it's just not improving, you got to, you got to seek somebody out. Like I, I've had mm -hmm. people message me like, I can't lift my arm for four <laughs> weeks. <laughs> oh shit, dude. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You, you know, it's like, it, it's like, you got to address that stuff. Like right. you don't want to give it 
four weeks of let, not doing anything, letting that tissue atrophy mm -hmm. and your shoulders start to stiffen up, you know, that kind of stuff. So just be wise and listen to your body. And I think that that's, that's really it. As you're older, listen to your body more. The signs, it's telling you things, right? Pain is telling you something. Pain's not always a bad thing. I mean, you don't want to have pain, but pain is telling you that there's, it, it's like a little alarm bell going off. You know, you need to address it or pay attention to it at least. Well, they have those people that don't, like there are people that don't have pain receptors in their body or they don't feel the <laughs> sensation of pain and they die really young, you know, because like yeah. um, imagine going through your life and never realizing things hurt. It's extremely uh, dangerous. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it would be terrifying. I mean, you know, pain doesn't, pain doesn't feel good, but it's a hell of a teacher, you know, yes. because whether it's like physical pain, when we touch a hot stove and we well, don't sure. do that anymore, or if it's emotional pain where we're like, we feel a certain feeling from something we realize not to engage with a particular person um, ever again, because of the emotional pain they gave us. It's a good teacher, it you is. know, but imagine never experiencing physical pain. I mean, you're going to die young. And so again, pain is just, we try to give it a bad sort of it's negative, it's not negative or positive. It just mm. is. It is what mm -hmm. it is. And you got to recognize it for what it is. Um, going to your point about the signs and like, you know, see, seek someone out. So when I was 18 years old, excuse me, I was 17 years old. That's actually when I tore my meniscus cartilage. So I was at a wrestling tournament and I was sitting down Indian style, right? With uh, mm -hmm. my legs crossed. Um, and I remember I was like watching the, my teammate go, um, and uh, I remember uh, Sherman and uh, he was getting ready. To, he was competing and he almost like he was he was like one of the green guys on the team. He was he was his first year wrestling and he almost pinned this like really good guy. And I was like, I was so excited for him. I jumped up and my legs being in that sort of lateral yeah. angle. When I extended up all thumb, I felt this pop yeah. and my leg, my leg locked out. I straightened it out. It swelled up a little bit and it was like feeling really stiff and I, I could barely bend it. And um, I had two more matches that day. I was like, oh, no. And so, <laughs> you know, I, I just basically put put a knee pad over it. And it was like, I can't. I got to go. And so I, my, my, my next match, I ended up beating the guy. It was a guy I'd beat several times that year, but I struggled with him a little bit more because I couldn't shoot. So I had to be reactive and put him in a front headlock and beat him. Yeah. And then in the finals match, it was with a guy who... I had beat him. He had beat me. Like we'd gone back and forth that year. And I remember just basically grit my teeth. And I was like, I got to shoot. Cause if I don't shoot, I can't win this match. And so I was shooting and all that stuff. And then it was weird enough where my knee kind of felt fine. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the next morning, bro, it was like all stiff and swollen. Yeah. And I dealt with that knee popping in and out, in and out, in and out for months. Um, like the knee catching. Yeah. yeah, then he then he would catch. Basically, what would happen is if, for people that are listening, essentially, when you have a bucket handle tear, your meniscus it, it's a it's a horseshoe on both sides of your knee, and this little bucket handle it basically this little tear happens, and the the tissue will get caught in your knee joint, and you'll feel like you cannot straighten your knee, and then you straighten it out, and you'll feel this pop. Yeah. Um. In my case, and then it it will, it will release. Um. And then basically, you can go back to doing what you're doing, and then your knee feels kind of about the same but it still feels a little off. Mm. And so when I started jujitsu, like I didn't really, I was like, I just got a bad knee. And so I, I wouldn't use like, for instance, with triangles, I couldn't do a triangle with my right leg because when I put my leg at that lateral angle, it would get caught. And I should have gone to the doctor sooner and said, Hey man, can you take a look at this? They probably could have <laughs> repaired it. I mean, it could have been fixed. It's possible. Um, yeah. 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 It could have been repaired. Now it may have been just, it may have been too bit far gone that it had to be shaved it off, but we could have probably shaved it off sooner so that less tissue was affected. Um, you know, that kind of thing, who knows, but I, it would have been something that should have been addressed sooner, mm -hmm. but I waited and waited and waited. And then eventually, you know, almost a year and some change later, the damn thing finally caught. And then I was in a much worse place because then by that time when it happened, there was no swelling. There was no like, basically all the, the doctor thought it was the, the, he thought it was like a muscle spasm. <laughs> like my, um, uh, my, the, the orthopedic I went to, he basically mm -hmm. gave me some muscle relaxers and set me up with PT. It was like, nah, you just, just go to PT. Cause he's like, he, there was no swelling on the knee or anything, not yeah. be because it, it had happened so gradually. And then, you know, it was all, it was a big mess. And so again, the symptoms were there. This, the, the whole thing was there, but I wasn't paying attention in, uh, even my 2014 knee issue. I think that was really where I started getting better about my like habits. Um, so again, I was 20, I guess I was 28 at the time um, or 20, yeah, 28 at the time. Uh, no, no, no. What were we saying? 
29. I was 29 at the time. And um, sorry, it took me a second. And um, when I had that one, that one was different because I remember when I had been leading up to it, when I look at it, the signs were there. Like I was getting up in, in the morning, my knees were real stiff and I wasn't doing anything to stretch them out or loosen them up or do mobility work. I was just basically training hard all the time and was being undisciplined about those things. And again, I paid for it. Now I'm I'm not so I'm not so uh, short minded. I spend some time doing stretching and things like that, and taking care of myself. And again, it's uh, it's something that you have to dive into. You have to become a student of these things, just like anything else. And you have to become kind of obsessed with improving the the, the situation of your body. You know. So, but yeah, yeah. Well, I think when you you had said earlier on the podcast, you said. Uh, you didn't learn anything from your first knee injury. I think you did. Well, I did, not, but I, yeah, I did. did. I didn't immediately. Exactly. Not at the time. Later on down the road, but, it, yeah, I did. But damn, if you if you would have learned it the first time, it would have been better. But you were forced to. You were forced mm -hmm. to learn it. Like uh, you were able to kind of squeak out, you know, because because uh, even though it was stiff and kind of bugged you, you could still work around it. Um, right. One more point I want to make which is important. I think you kind of mentioned this and, and we've talked about it before. It's rotating the tires, uh, you know, mm -hmm. doing things uh, a little bit differently, you know, modifying your game. So like, just because you're injured in a certain way, doesn't mean like I, I as a physical therapist, I, the last thing I want to do is, is uh, tell someone to stop doing what they love doing. Yeah. Um, I try every way that I can. It's kind of like a balancing act. Can I keep you mm -hmm. safe and still allow you to do what you want to do? Not always possible, but you can in some aspects. I've done it where I've hurt my hand or, or broken, a, I've, I've torn a ligament in my finger that I needed to be positioned a certain way in a splint. So I trained one handed. Obviously, it helped out in certain ways. It was humbling in certain ways as well. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think, I think rotating the tires, meaning modifying your game, you know, if you're somebody that's got neck or back issues and you invert all the time. You may have to start using that as on as needed basis, not as your mm -hmm. go to, right. um, even though like, man, you can invert and get underneath somebody and, and ankle lock yeah, yeah. the shit out of them. Yes. Use that when necessary. Keep that in your back pocket. But that might not be your uh, develop other parts of your game. Right. So I think we've both done that where we've rotated the tires, meaning like I'm going to play this different game mm -hmm. um, just to give my body a little bit of a recovery, a little bit of a rest because, you know, yeah. you're going down to the well too many times. It's going to, you're, it's going to come, come dry and, and then you're going to have problems. So, yeah, it's like, so the, we're, we're using cars over and over again for this episode. But like when you think of a car with the tire tread, each one of us as a person, we've only got so much tread on our bodies, right? Every time you use your body, you are, this is the way that I think of it. Every time you use your body, you are taking a little bit away from it, right? It's basically like if your body is a, is a finite resource, every time you use it, you're taking a little bit away from it, right? Just a little bit. And it's just the nature of what it is. I mean, our body is constantly in a state of like decay to some point. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it's a slow decay, of course. It's not just like falling apart, but obviously we all know that we're going to get old and die. Our body is going to fail us and break down. It's just the nature of the beast. It's not positive or negative. It just is. And with that idea of the tread on the tires, you know, when you go to the uh, the mechanic or whatever and you get your tires rotated, the point is to rotate the tires around so that you can use those tires longer. Because if you, let's say if you have a car and you never rotate the tires, you'll end up getting uneven wear where, you know, one part of the tires and maybe in the front or the back will start wearing faster than the other ones. And then you'll have to, you know, it, it messes things up where if you kind of rotate them around, you can get more even wear and you can use them for longer. Um, yeah. And even then, if you start having like really uneven wear on your tires, you can even have some issues when you're driving as far as instability. Um, going back to your body, when you use a position, most positions have specific parts of the body that they use over and over and over again. Yep. And these can create uh, imbalances with muscles. These can create uh, excessive wear on particular muscles or joints. 
And so when you start to, you know, have problems with those areas, you might want to move around to a different position to then allow the wear essentially to be spread to another part of the body. So for instance, if you play a lot of spider guard in the gi and your hands are just getting destroyed and your hands are hurting, you might play a position like butterfly guard, which maybe relies on more underhooks and overhooks, less gripping of the gi. And yep. so this way you can use that position. Um, or like you said, if you're playing a lot of inverting and your neck's hurting, um, this is one of the things I, I, I really stress to people. I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of constantly inverting. I think there are, I think it's a good, it can be, can be really good, but I also think that there are plenty of other effective ways to get up under someone's hips yeah. that will not long-term destroy your neck and inverting. It is what it is. It's a very effective tactic, um, in jiu-jitsu that you can use, but you also have to remember that that effective tactic is going to the, the place that it takes the toll on is your back and your spine and your, your, your neck. And it's one of those things where that's not, that's not a good exchange for me, right? I, I don't want to exchange <laughs> a, I don't want to exchange winning a role or winning a match by putting my neck or spine in more like unnecessary danger, right? I mean, our spine and neck get tugged on enough in jiu-jitsu as it is. I don't want to overdo that with a particular movement. Now that said, if you decide to use it, just understand that. But like you said, if you maybe are using it and you get really good with it, have the sense to say, you know what, let me develop some other positions too. And if I need it, it's there in my back pocket, but then I also have other options um, for myself to use. And that can be another tactic as you get older too, where, you know, you can run into these overuse injuries much quicker than say a younger person. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people that are a bit older, I find that they a lot of times run into tendonitis a lot faster than say the younger people, um, you know? And so it's one of these things where if you find you're getting some tendonitis in your elbow, which is really, really common, be mindful of how you're gripping the gi or whatever. And you may want to change the grips that you use so that you're not using the same ones. Cause a lot of times, like you'll see people that, especially when they're newer, they'll come in and they'll have those death grips on the collars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they hold like life and death. And then they'll experience a lot of tendonitis. And if you can get yeah. them to use say underhooks instead, they a lot of times have less tendonitis because they're not just clenching their hand together uh, for such a prolonged period of time. And so along with all the stuff that we've been talking about, whether you're young or old, uh, uh, new or new, new or, you know, experienced in the sport, spreading the wear and tear in your body by rotating the tires, rotating the positions and techniques you can use, uh, can be very effective. And it may be worthwhile to consider depending on the kind of issues that you have with your own body. Cause we all have some yeah. can consider which positions you're going to play a bit thoughtfully, you know, like, so if you've already got some back and neck issues, you may not want to mess around with the inverting. If you've already got like, um, let's say if you were you played baseball and you've already got like some shoulder issues, you may not want to play half guard all the time where you're you're constantly fighting for the underhook and getting your shoulder ridged on. You may want to think about maybe playing a different position, that kind of thing. Yeah. All right, guys. So thanks for joining the podcast today. I hope you had learned something. Hope you got an idea to chew on. One disclaimer before we wrap up here today, I want you guys to understand that when I'm talking about that you're going to break down, that your body's going to break down and that you're going to die someday, it's not to be morbid <laughs> because a lot of times people, I, I remember I did a video one time where I was talking about the same thing and people were like, that's a really sad, I'm like, it's not sad, it just is, you know, and like trying to resist against that makes no damn sense, <laughs> it just because it, you can't, it's like, you know, it's like you're, you're tied to the tracks. And the rail, the trains are coming at some point. There ain't no change in that. So why resist it? Or you might as well move with it. You might as well flow with it um, because you're not stopping it. And so it's not to make you feel bad about something or to whatever. It's just about the nature of the reality of the situation. Yeah. And I think if you move with it rather than trying to resist it, you'll be better for it. You know. And so um, I just wanted to share that idea because again, it's, it's something that we've all we, we all come to grips with at some point, and that's something I've come to grips with with training because. You, phys you physically just have to, um, but hopefully get some ideas for you. And again, if you're younger, hopefully this gave you some ideas to train a little bit more intelligently for longevity's sake so that you don't rack up injuries in your youth um, and unnecessarily hurt your body. And so you can get more from yourself when you're training uh, as well. Again, thanks to our sponsors that help make the podcast possible. Uh, Charlotte's Web, if you go to their website at charlottesweb.com, we have a new promo code, jujitsu 20 which will give you 20% off your order on any of their single items. It does not not does not include their bundles and things like that and uh, items that have already been, been discounted. Uh, but again, I'm a big 
proponent for using CBD. It's made a big impact on my life and my training personally. And it's, it's really helped with a lot of different things. And again, everybody's endocannabinoid system is completely different. You know, our bodies are a little bit different. We respond to medicine different. We respond to everything different. And so when you use it, you know, take it, take it for your own test, you know, and I encourage people to try it out for about a month. Uh, probably the most cost effective way to do so is using, um, one of the tinctures and then trying that out for one month and just kind of seeing what you feel and maybe take a sort of page from my book when I was talking about journaling, keep, whenever you add a new supplement into the mix, keep track of how you feel. So if you're using a supplement for a particular thing like sleep or energy or whatever it might be, keep track of how it makes you feel during those periods of time. And so if you're using it, keep track of how it makes you feel for those different things. But again, you can get their stuff at charlottesweb.com. Promo code is shijitsu. Uh, 20, save 20% off the order. Also, thanks to uh, Matt at Epic Roll for sponsoring the podcast and helping us helping us make it to bring it to you um, by supporting us. And you can check out his stuff by going to epicrollbjj.com. And again, he sells everything from rash guards, shorts, geese, uh, gym bags, joggers, hoodies, the whole thing. Anything jiu-jitsu related that you could possibly want is there and it's available w- with high quality um, uh, items and with really cool designs. And so you can go to epicrollbjj.com and then the promo code is jujitsu for 15% off your order. Also, thanks to Manscaped for helping make the podcast possible. Manscaped is the premier men's, I'm just going to say men's grooming products because they say men's below the belt grooming because it started off that way. But I've used several of their products for not below my belt, above my belt. And it's been super effective for that. And I like everything that they've made from their trimmers and their shave, uh, their razors and their balms to their colognes and everything else in between. And so if you want to get any of their stuff, whether you're a man looking for some grooming products or if you're maybe a a person looking for grooming products for a man in your life, you can go to their website at manscaped.com. And use a promo code jujitsu20 for 20% off the order and you get free shipping. So it's a pretty good deal uh, on that purchase. And again, guys, if you want to support the podcast directly, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. And with that, you get a backlog of tons of different content that we've released over the years, stuff that's never been shown before, uh, videos, audio uh, content from the podcast. And it also includes, if you want to, if you go to the, um, the membership there, we also include a green room edition now which is basically is a chance for you to hang out with eugene and i before one of the podcasts we do this once a month and it's a chance to hang out with us live it's the only way that you can pretty much get to speak with me live if it's not in person and so if you've ever listened to the podcast you're like man i i I like listening to those guys and you've ever wanted to conversate with us directly it's a chance to do that and so that'll be going on uh at the time of recording this um We'll be doing it in about two weeks. And so our next green room will be, the date may change. If you join the Patreon, we'll post up in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it'll be on the week of the 14th through the 18th sometime. So Valentine's Day weekend, February. And so if you join in then now, you'll get an update about that. And you can join into the next green room with us. Hang out, uh, chat a little bit before our next podcast. And um, last but not least, if you would like to get my daily email that I send out typically in the afternoon right now, uh, along with a free gift package that I give away um, as a thank you for joining, you can get that by going to jujitsu.net slash join. When you join, you'll now receive my daily email where I talk about different strategies, everything from jujitsu specific stuff to mindset stuff to books I'm reading to just basically whatever's going on in my universe. You also get fr- first dibs on any products, events, or anything that's going on uh, related to the jujitsu stuff. Along with that, you'll also get a free gift package, which will include three different ebooks as well as a video. And the, the ebooks are one uh, on game plan, uh, a game plan guide. One is a drilling ebook with eight different strategies on basically breaking plateaus in your game and effectively implementing techniques. And the last one is an at home study guide and workout guide. So it has some workouts that you can do at home. It has also has some tips on how to study jujitsu at home. I made it originally during the quarantine and lockdown stuff that happened in 2020 to help people out. And, you know, since then it's become something useful for people if they're experiencing injuries or just anything that's kept them off the mats for any period of time. But you can get all that um, by going to jujitsu.net slash join, J-O-I-N. So guys, that is the podcast. Again, thank you guys so much for being here and we'll talk to you guys next week.